Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2022-23 season. My name is Dan and today we are talking all about those bench options, those super cheap players that you can just stick on your bench and forget about. So basically the idea of this video is we're trying to find the best possible players at the cheapest price for their position. So goalkeepers and defenders, we're looking for 4 million options in the midfield and forward positions, we're looking for 4.5 million options because this year, particularly with the five sub rule and the fact that, uh, you know, there's no COVID really cancelling games anymore. I think we can afford to spend the absolute minimum on our bench, allowing us to spend more money on our first 11. And to do that, we're going to spend literally as little as physically possible on our bench, at least for the most part. You know, three out of four of your subs should be at that baseline price. So we're going to find the players who are best for those baseline prices and hopefully find some players that can occasionally actually go into your first 11 and definitely cover you if things go wrong with your first 11. So we're going to come up with some good players today. You're going to enjoy this one. If you do, please do leave a like. It helps out the channel so, so much. I cannot understand, uh, understate that enough. And uh, yeah, please do subscribe if you're new around here as well and you want more FPL content in your faces. But uh, yeah, we're going to go for each position, guys. Best player who is the cheapest possible price for their position. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to start you off with the goalkeeper, and that's Gasaniga from Fulham. I think there's not really too many options in goal, to be honest. Last year, we did somehow have Ben Foster as a 4 million goalkeeper who actually played regularly. I think the closest thing we're going to get to that is Gasaniga at Fulham, just because he did actually end up playing 13 games for Fulham last season. Unfortunately, he did find himself out of the team at the end of the season, with uh, Marek Rodak actually playing all of the games in the second half of the season other than one where he was unfortunately ill with COVID but all of the other games Rodak did play but Gazaniga just the fact that he did play a lot of games and he started off last season as the first choice goalkeeper for Fulham does give us a little bit of an indication that maybe he can become first choice keeper again um, I don't want to make any promises here like I said that the goalkeeping space for four million options is really not so good and actually maybe it might be a better idea so if you've got your your you know first team your first 11 goalkeeper if there, there's a substitute goalkeeper from that team that is 4 million, maybe that would be a good idea to go for. So, for example, if you've got Sanchez in goal from Brighton, you can maybe go for Steele as your backup goalkeeper who is a 4 million goalkeeper. That way you know that if Sanchez ever gets injured or suspended or anything like that, you are going to have Steele to come in there as a backup for your FPL team. So maybe that's the better ways of looking at it. But if I had to predict one goalkeeper to get some minutes this season, aside from injuries and suspensions, then I would probably say Gazaniga at Fulham is probably the guy. Now, defenders is a little bit better. We have got Nico Williams, who has just signed for Nottingham Forest. Because he started off at Liverpool, FPL actually priced him at 4 million, expecting that Williams would just, you know, waste away in the reserves of Liverpool, so gave him a really cheap price. But now, he's had this, uh, this uh, signing for Nottingham Forest, which is fantastic news indeed for FPL fans, because we get a 4 million defender who has actually been signed to be a first-team player at Nottingham Forest. So he's going to line up in the right wing-back position. So he's not only going to be uh, a defender, a playing defender, but he's a playing defender that's actually going to play in a fairly wide, like kind of advanced right-hand side position in a defense that's kind of known to be quite tricky to play against. Obviously, in the Premier League, things might be a little bit different, and we do with these cheap options. Just need to manage our expectations a, a little bit. We're not expecting world beaters in this kind of category of very, very, very extremely cheap players, but we can still get uh, or expect a few points from Williams. So last season, he played the second half of the season in the championship on loan at Fulham. He scored two goals and got two assists, and uh, got six clean sheets as well in those 14 games so pretty good returns for a championship player considering he only played the second half of the season as well uh 1.4 shots per game one key pass per game as well so if you can replicate or similarly replicate those numbers at nottingham forest i think actually there could be a few points across the season for williams and in that case of an absolute emergency in your first team where things don't go right, one of your players gets very randomly benched and doesn't come on the pitch for whatever reason, I do think Williams can cover you at, you know, at least for two points. And if not, there is that potential for clean sheets and maybe even goals and assists in some of those easier games. So I think he could actually genuinely be a player who can score you points despite the fact he's so cheap, which is a real, real special pick. So in terms of 4 million defenders, if you're going to go for anyone, I would go for Nico Williams. But I do have another suggestion for you just in case you don't fancy this one. 
So Nathan Patterson was signed to Everton in January of last year. He is known as the player who is going to come in. Very young guy. He's going to come in and replace Coleman eventually. Now, Seamus Coleman is actually going to be injured for the beginning of the season. So this is actually going to give Patterson an opportunity to start the season off as the first team right back or right wing back as we kind of expected in this uh, in this Everton team. So again, a player who could be playing in a fairly advanced right wing back role. Very exciting for 4 million. And he's one of those players who he could actually end up being the first choice defender long term he's probably going to be the first choice right wing back for Everton right now it probably still is Coleman but whilst Coleman's injured if Patterson plays very well and he is a very highly rated player he could actually solidify that place for him and he's been given that opportunity and Everton slightly higher table team than Nottingham Forest you would probably say as well possibly a chance of a few more clean sheets and the fixtures don't look too bad either so even though he's not as nailed on as Nico Williams in the long term, this could be a, a little bit of a more risky pick that could actually be a little bit slightly more higher reward. Uh, yeah, this is a really highly rated Scottish fullback. He's come from uh, Rangers in, in January. He didn't get too much game time last year. He did have some problems with injuries, but look, this player is one for the future for sure. It's just a question, is the future now? If you think it is for Patterson, then he could be an insane pick at 4 million. All right, this one has to be the favourite of the video for me. In the midfield position, we've got Andreas Pereira. Again, we've had a very similar situation where at the beginning of the, of the uh, FPL season, when FPL was launched, as far as everyone was concerned, Andreas Pereira was just going to be wasting away in the reserves of Manchester United. And therefore, he was priced at a very, very generous uh, 4.5 million as a midfielder um, no one expected him to get any game time but now he's got a move to Fulham now over the last year he's had a really successful move to Flamengo on loan he played really well there for Flamengo fans um, you know will probably appreciate that he played really well for them got a lot of goals uh, got a few assists as well over the course of the season and everyone was very very happy with his performances so happy that Flamengo actually wanted to keep him like desperately wanted to keep him but they couldn't afford to keep him so Sadly, Pereira had to move to a different team. Fulham was the, uh, the destination of choice. So he's coming to Fulham to replace the outgoing Carvalho, who signed for Liverpool. And we're expecting Pereira to get a lot of game time for Fulham. We're expecting him to play as a first 11 player pretty much every single game week. So a first choice attacking midfielder capable of getting a few goals and a few assists. Again, we've got to manage our expectations. He's, not, he's probably not going to be a world beater in this Fulham team. But remember, he was a first choice, first team player for Manchester United just a couple of seasons ago. Go. Everyone was raving about him. It's only a couple of seasons later. He's a really successful loan spell uh, elsewhere. I think this could actually be a, a, a player who can genuinely score you a decent amount of points. Not an insane amount of points. Don't expect the same levels of points as, you know, your six, seven, eight million midfielders. It's not going to happen, but potentially there are some points there. I think he can cover you on your bench if you, you know, you've got four starting midfielders, for example, or maybe three starting midfielders. One of your bench midfielders should definitely be Pereira just because he is just as cheap as physically possible, an attacking player, a first choice player for his team. Everything kind of lines up. This one looks like a fantastic pick and will almost certainly be going into my FPL team. Almost certainly uh, come game week one. So definitely recommend this one. Again, I've got another alternative for you, and that is Josh De Silva at Brentford. So, um, last season, we didn't see very much from Josh De Silva. Unfortunately, he did have a hip injury that ruled him out pretty much for the whole year. He did uh, end up getting some minutes at the end of the season, but before his big injury, he was seen as one of Brentford's best players in the championship. He was absolutely dominated. I think one season he scored something like 10 goals and four assists, and the next season he still scored, you know, five or six goals. So, he was scoring goals from that midfield position. Uh, in the uh, by the end of last not last year's campaign but the year before, he actually got the number ten shirt. So at the beginning of last season, Brentford gave De Silva the number ten shirt just to, as a show of confidence. He's a midfielder who likes to drive forward, likes to take on a man, is not afraid to take on a shot either, and it's actually could be a pretty decent FPL asset if he gets game time. Now, the question is, has he fallen out of favour with all of his time out and with Brentford kind of planning around De Silva, you know, planning for life without De Silva for that entire season? Does that now mean that De Silva is not going to be a first choice player anymore? I don't know for sure. The fact that they gave him the number 10 shirt should give us some confidence, though, that actually maybe they 
they do have a plan for him. They do still really rate this player. I mean, he was one of their best players uh, in their campaign going into the Premier League. So is he going to come back with a bang? Possibly. I've also seen other kind of things about potentially De Silva getting a loan move or something like that to another Premier League club to get his career back on track, basically. Really good player. I don't know how they've managed to price him at 5 million. I do think that is at 4.5 million. I think that's too cheap. I think he should have really been a 5 million, maybe even 5.5 million if, you, if we knew he was going to be starting. But certainly 4.5 million for a player who you know not a lot of people will be speaking about he's like super low ownership people don't really know the situation around De Silva and the fact that he had his, his injury and how good he was before he got that injury then you know it's a real differential and a real kind of brainiac move that you can maybe go for I, I think you're going to make some of your uh, mini league rivals quite jealous with this pick if you go for it and it ends up paying off really well but one to keep an eye on and if he gets a loan move to another Premier League club I would probably arguably say that you could go for De Silva over Pereira arguably but um yeah Pereira is probably the safer pick but De Silva is a little spicy one for you as well in terms of forwards, it's not as good. Defenders and midfielders is really where we we can find some some you know baseline cheapest possible players who actually look really good, who actually can get you some decent FPL points. In terms of forwards, not so much. But the idea is that if there's going to be one 4.5 million forward who is going to have a breakthrough season, it could be Sam Greenwood at Leeds. Now, he got his first start for Leeds in the Premier League on the final day of last season, which was a super crucial game for Leeds. They absolutely you know, had to win in order to stay in the Premier League. So Leeds obviously have a little bit of faith in Greenwood. So yeah, it's not a bad pick. Two assists last season in seven games. Six of those games were substitute appearances, of course. Fixtures are okay, and the good thing about Greenwood is, although he's listed as a forward, I think he could get some game time in not just the forward position, but maybe in midfield as well, possibly on the wing. He is a fairly versatile player. He did play a little bit in midfield last season, so there is that possibility that that's going to give him his uh, flexibility. is going to give him a little bit more opportunity to come into the first team at Leeds. But Leeds United fans really rate this player. Maybe not quite at the level of Joe Gelhart, but certainly Greenwood is definitely a player to watch, and he could have a breakthrough season. And for 4.5 million, you know, that's kind of the best thing you can really hope for. It's happened before. We've seen 4.5 million forwards come in and have an absolute crazy breakthrough season. Could Sam Greenwood be that guy? Possibly. He's probably our best option as things currently stand. But we do have one more option. So the alternative, the hipster pick in terms of your 4.5 forwards is going to be Liam Delap. I have to be very careful to not say Rory Delap, but it is Rory Delap's son, Liam Delap, who has been listed as a 4.5 million forward. He plays for Man City right now, but right now particularly, there's a lot of talks about him potentially getting a move to Southampton. Southampton have obviously lost Broya. broya has gone back to Chelsea at the end of his loan spell. So Southampton will be looking to get a new young striker to fill his boots. And... Liam Delap, he has absolutely taken the under-23s competitions by storm. Obviously, he's not been quite at the level to get regular minutes for Man City. You can kind of understand why. But Man City will be very keen to develop this player because he has just scores pretty much every single game in, in the youth levels. Like, he is just a crazy good player, a crazy highly rated young player um, that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about as being a real upcoming talent in English football. So, he is a striker. He scores a lot of goals. Can he transition to Premier League football? I think the indication is, yeah, potentially he can. But he's going to need a loan move somewhere. And if he does get a loan move somewhere, I think he is good enough to play regularly in the Premier League. So maybe not initially, but I think Delap, particularly if he signs for Southampton on loan or something like that, he could be this season's Broya. So the new Broya, and he's actually coming in at 4.5 million instead of 5 million, which Broya was. So really, really a nice one to look out for. So just keep an eye on this. If Liam Delap does get a loan move to a Premier League club, I think he could, well, he probably will be the 4.5 million forward to go for. Could have a crazy one. Uh, he's got the talent. I really like this one. So keep an eye on this one, guys. The move hasn't happened yet as of recording, but it could happen any day now. And if it does, we are, we are onto a winner here. We really are onto a winner here. And there we have it, guys. That's the end of the video. If you did enjoy what you saw today, please do leave a like. Please do subscribe as well if you're new around here. And I want to hear from you guys. Are there any other 4 million goalkeepers or defenders or 4.5 million midfielders or forwards that you think could have a breakthrough season this year and actually get you some decent FPL points? Obviously, we're not expecting mega points, but any player who gets some points, um, you know, who can just sit on your bench and be a, kind of a prospect for the future on your bench, 
is a kind of a good player to go for. It's nice to try and get ahead of these things, isn't it? So uh, yeah, do let me know if you can think of any others that I haven't mentioned in this video. I'm sure you'll have a few. Uh, but yeah, maybe some of the 4.5 million midfielders. I know there's quite a few of them. A lot of them are defensive midfielders though. So I don't know if they're going to get a lot of FPL returns, but maybe that's all you're really after, just minutes. But maybe there's some spicy ones out there that I've missed out on. Please do let me know. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the content. There's loads more videos on my channel around FPL 2020. 22, 23 that I think you're going to enjoy and I'll see you later mates. Bye bye.